Echo of Malthus. More like Echo of Malfast. <laughs> this build's really good, okay, and I'm very excited to present it to you. Hello, my fellow sorcerers, and welcome to it. The Sorcerer build of Season 3. Of course, there is still experimentation to be done. Uh, there's something I think might be quite special that no one has tried yet. But generally, overall, this is, as I said, it. Our best build. Highest damage, most comfortable to play, tankiest cruise control. This is what you need. Blizzard, Ice Spikes, and my little twist on it that I am quite proud of is performing exceptionally everywhere you could possibly need it to. And I suppose it's not really, like, too much of a surprise. Blizzard Ice Spikes was the second best Sorcerer build last season, and now that they've massively murdered the best one in Ball Lightning, it's risen to the top, but it has got even better than ever, thanks to a cool little addition that I will go over. And as you can see, yeah, absolutely stomped Malthus, absolutely obliterated Lilith, phase one and phase two, before she can essentially do anything of note, and comfortably walking through tier 90 plus nightmare vaults and dungeons without a care in the world. The raw damage output of this is something silly. Like, you don't need to start stacking and stacking and stacking and layering blizzards. Obviously on bosses you will, because what else are you going to do, just sit there AFK, but generally against elites and enemies as you go through, one blizzard will kill any group of enemies you put it on. Your ice spikes are going to be exploding for 500 to a million damage consistently once everything is firing. It's kind of a cheat code, honestly. You don't really have to aim it, it keeps going for ages, and you just sort of move on with your life. I mean, one of the best examples is the final vault room with the waves and waves and waves of elites. It just doesn't matter, because the second everything spawns, it instantly blows up and gets deleted. So you're constantly chilling and freezing everyone, so they're not doing damage to you. You just have constant barrier and constant massive damage reduction, so you don't have to worry about getting randomly splatted by something. You can just face tank bosses, and we never ever run out of mana while having hyper attack speed, so we can layer blizzards faster than we ever have before. I really am pleased with this, how it's performing, and I really do like Blizzard Ice Spikes as a build, and I'm really glad it is just so dominant right now in both Season 3 and Sorcerer. Honestly, in contention for not just the best Sorcerer build, but one of the best builds overall in Season 3, and it's nice to still be firmly the second best class. Barbarian's still absolutely nutty, but hey, second place still good. All right, let's get into this. The tree skill, as always, will be our place to start, and a familiar face greets us instantly. It is a Firebolt. Look. We need it not just to get to core, but yes, it is going to be the first of our enchantments. We need that burning synergy, we need enemies to be on fire, we need the extra crit damage from Devouring Blaze, we need the fire stack for Talrasha, it's too good to ignore, and while you might be thinking, but what about the Seneschal? That can do our fiery needs, right? Technically, but it also is going to be doing much more important things, and we don't have the Tuning Stone space to dedicate to fire. Also, this build actually doesn't have many great options for enchantment slots, and the two we have are by far the best, so it works out in this case. It's a little bit boring, but it is optimum. Then we go over to your cause, where we will just grab two points in Frozen Orb, and then Enhanced and Greater. The extra point is so that we can get two defensives, but the main purpose here is to have an extra source of Vulnerable, and a ranged one at that, in the second enchant being the frozen orbs, we're constantly throwing them out. It really is just a bit of extra damage, but mainly a vulnerable engine, and it works nicely for that purpose. Frost Nova by itself just doesn't have enough uptime. Then we go on to our defensives, where we grab a Flame Shield, take it to Enhanced and Shimmering, our beautiful immunity button, I cannot imagine playing without it, and it is an extra source of fire. Then we go to Teleport, which is our source of lightning damage for Telrashes, but look, we're always going to have Teleport on every Sorcerer build 
ever, it's the best mobility skill in the game, and then the shimmering to add DR to it. Also, of course, raiment grouping. Max out your glass cannon, because we're tanky enough, so this is just free massive damage. One rank in attunement, so our defensives can reset. Grab your ice armor, and then enhance, just to help smooth out the mana curve. And then you want your frost nova, and then take it down to mystical for another blast of vulnerable. And uh, this lets us go to conjuration, where we only want three out of three precision, as lucky hit does matter to this build, even though crit chance and crit damage is more important. Then we get a line to get to mana shield and protection for the constant barrier and the constant DR. Keep us alive and keep our barrier relevant aspects constantly active. Talking of barrier relevant, over in your mastery we get 3 out of 3 icy veil just for that barrier uptime and the extra tankiness. You do feel it and you do notice it. You don't need this if you're not doing like hard 80 plus content but tier 80 I should say but it does make things just a little bit smoother and there's not really anywhere better for the points to go. Grab cold front so that we make our enemies frozen enemies much much faster. This really helps out. We always have a barrier so it means the blizzard near instantly freezes and as soon as a frozen enemy is frozen they're taking so much more damage that they just get disintegrated. It's really nice to have. Only one rank in blizzard as the damage is not coming from the blizzard itself, it's coming from the aspect making it summon the ice spikes, we don't need to waste points amping it up, though it does still do a good chunk of damage, so that is nice, and most importantly, this counts as a damage over time effect, and that will become relevant soon. Then get enhanced, and then get the buffed mages, no longer conditional, just nice long lasting blizzards. Get your inner flames, and then full devouring blaze for that burning extra crit damage synergy. We're done here now, so over to your ultimates, where we just get deep freeze, because we might as well have it. We have the aspect that makes it summon ice spikes, though that's not why we have the aspect, but it is a nice emergency button to just clear a room without any risk whatsoever. But we don't need to improve it, because these points just kind of don't do anything super relevant for us. We don't need the extra resetting, and we don't need the extra barrier. What we do need, though, is all of the frost things. Loads more damage from permafrost, half frost, and icy touch. That's self explanatory, but we do want the extra bit of mana help from Frigid Freeze, as with the attack speed that we are cleverly getting here, you are layering blizzards and casting them so fast that you are burning mana. And while the Seneschal will mostly keep on top of it with resource support, the extra from Frigid Breeze really does help. Then we go over to something you may have already noticed and think, huh, really? Yeah, we want Essie's Ferocity. The reason we want that is A, we have no real need for Avalanche because the Blizzard damage itself is irrelevant. We have no need for Shatter because we're doing so much damage that we don't need enemies to explode for more damage. This isn't Abattoir of Zern numbers, they just die from a couple Ice Spikes, we don't need them to freeze and pop, our AoE clear is monstrous already, it's just overkill and a waste. And against bosses, well, they're not freezing and exploding anyway, so that leaves another option. We're not doing burning damage, really. We're not doing anything shock-based, so we're left with Essu's Ferocity. And what this does for us is activate the Essu's Ferocity effect when we crit enemies to death or just crit in general on a boss. And while we don't get much use out of the critical strike damage or the critical strike chance because it's with fire, what we do get use out of is the associated aspect that we'll get to that gives us permanent 50% attack speed, which is 50% more blizzards per time, which is massive when layering blizzards takes this to insane DPS, and that's what melts bosses in seconds. So, uh, there we have the skill tree, let's get on to the gear. We uh, will start with uh, the gems, of course, you want critical strike damage to vulnerable on your weapons, you want armor on your jewelry, and you want health on your armor. 
So, aspect-wise, uh, we have conceited, more damage while you have a barrier, you always have a barrier, this is just one of the single best universal sorcerer damage amps. Then, we want uh, Frozen Tundra, so your ice spikes have a 50% increased explosion radius, we want every ice spike to hit everything, it's a huge increase to the build, even if it's a little bit perhaps anticlimactic, it is very much worth having, it's just for that radius increase. Then we get ourselves this, the Ancient Flame, that 50% attack speed I was talking about. I really cannot overstate how much of a difference this makes, and is a great way to capitalize on an otherwise anticlimactic key passive choice for an Ice Spikes build, at least in current Season 3 hardest content. On your helmet, we have our defensive, either Juggernaut or Disobedience, choose which one you prefer playing with. I like Juggernaut because it's not conditional, I'm not going to get randomly one shot by a random auto attack because disobedience stacks dropped off and I don't really feel the evade cooldown increase because we have teleport, flame shield makes you run faster, we're very quick as a sorcerer anyway. Then lastly, the main aspect that makes this whole work, you have to have this and as high a one as you can get, glacial. Your blizzard summons ice spikes that explode for damage and do more damage to frozen enemies. You require this and it needs to be on your amulet so it gets 1.5 times. Over to the unique side of things, we want Esu's Heirloom, we need crit chance, we need crit damage, and we need mana cost reduction, so this is perfect, the movement speed is lovely too. Tibalt's Will then, the extra resource is phenomenal, and the 50 resource restore, amplified by your resource gen, is also phenomenal, it's the final piece of the puzzle when it comes to keeping our mana infinite to constantly quickly layer blizzards. We will be rotating our flame shield and teleport unstoppable to keep triggering this effect as much much as we can, and hey, the damage increase is great too. The ever-present classic raiment, grouping in a blizzard so everyone goes pop, I mean, it's self-explanatory, we don't need an extra defensive aspect, we might as well get the huge increase to clear speed and output that raiment gives. Then on to your rings, we have Talrashes, always Talrashes in every Sorcerer build. The lightning damage from Teleport, the ice and fire is self-explanatory, and the affixes are perfect. Then we have x -Files. Now then, you might be asking me as we change locations, Wait, where's Blue Rose? This literally gives you the mana cost reduction, the critical strike damage, and the ice spike damage. That's all things you need for this build. And more ice spikes? Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is, and I wish we had three rings. But we have to ask ourselves, what's more damage? The affixes on this ring and its extra effect. The extra effect isn't actually that great. Or... The explosions from x file x file that gives us the cooldown reduction we need, the other stats are just fine, but the raw pop damage on this is millions, AoE all of the time. Remember what I said about Blizzard, it is a, a damage over time effect as far as the game is concerned. So with uh, my amulet off, so we don't trigger any actual ice spikes and you can just see the pure damage occur, well, let's have a look what happens. We start layering these guys up, and you can see already these huge pops of damage going off. The frosty ones and the fire ones from the uh, fire enchantment, from your firebolt enchantment. This means that with Blizzard constantly layering, with Firebolt stacks constantly building, we're getting constant half million to one million, you're seeing them constantly happen, pops of damage. That overall is so much more than the increased Blue Rose gives us, and makes X-Files the natural complement to a Blizzard build for even more POW. Now... Also, the explosions reflect the element type, so the frost ones from Blizzard, whatever, but the explosions from x file that the Firebolt is triggering are fire, which is fire damage, which suddenly our key passive actually matters, the extra crit chance, the extra crit damage on our fire-based damage. That is very, very cool, and it means that very specifically, for x files explosions, Esu's Ferocity is not just here for attack speed, but also for its normal damage increasing effects. And that's a really nice little layered synergy for us. So yeah, definitely x files 
Then, when it comes to your actual affixes that you need, you want the following. Critical Strike Chance, Critical Strike Damage. Cooldown Reduction, Attack Speed, Lucky Hit Chance, Ranks of Devouring Blaze, Ranks of Hoarfrost, Mana Cost Reduction, Resource Generation, and then just generally your damage increases like Close, Vulnerable, and so on and so forth, Intelligence to Burning. Defensively, you want to make sure you have percent total armor, and then you should be about right. Of course, make sure that your resistances are all maxed. Mine are still missing a little bit because my glyphs aren't maxed out, but once my glyphs are all maxed out, this will be at 70%. It's close enough that I would rather get the armor than waste decoration slots on hugely overcapping the three that I'm missing. That about does it then for your gear side of things, so let's look at the Seneschal. You want to have yourself Flash of Adrenaline for that standard 20% permanent multiplicative increase. Pair it with duration and initiative so that it's always on, this is huge, then I have safeguard for now as uh, the damage reduction is nice, that little extra bit helps, but if you have genesis, sadly I don't, I have had Evernight drop multiple times, but no genesis, woohoo, yay, I love RNG drops, this then replaces safeguard and you have duration, initiative, genesis, flash of adrenaline, it's too good to ignore. On the other side of things, you want yourself tempest as it attacks fast, at range, hits multiple enemies and spreads, which means it's going to, more than any other skill, consistently activate both resource support, which lets you really spam those blizzards, and then also efficiency support for an extra 15% crit chance, as we want as much crit chance as we can get for the ice spikes. Lastly then, you want Evernight in the final slot for the permanent plus 4 to all your skills. If you don't have Evernight, you can instead use something to help your vulnerable uptime, like Breaking. Or indeed more fire if you want to, really anything uh, that you feel is good until Evernight takes its rightful place. So, uh, when it comes to actually uh, playing this build then, how it all pans out, well, look, let me show you the mana situation. With our trusty Seneschal, with our passive effects, you can see that we are just nicely layering away and away and away, and nothing is bothering us. If we get our third stack of Telrashes there, just look at the damage, look at the DPS, it's beautiful to behold, and I really can't get enough of it. Use your Frost Nova whenever you want an instant freeze, half frost burst, and of course vulnerable uptime. Teleport, you uh, want to progress through the dungeon as fast as you can. Ice armor when you are in danger, and flame shield when you're in more danger. However, Special mention to Teleport and Flame Shield in relation to Tibalt's Will. If we are firing away and we need a little bit more mana, we'll then teleport to the spot and suddenly we are full because of Tibalt's Will. And then Flame Shield and now we're at full mana again because of Tibalt's Will. The same can be said with Deep Freeze, it will give you a full mana top off. So we can rotate these three abilities to never run out which is more important against bosses, because they will trigger that Esu's ferocity, and now we will see just how fast we start casting. Look at us. Now we need that extra little bit of mana rotation as I go through it, and you can just see the increase of 50% faster, more prevalent blizzards. We're just about keeping on top of things mana-wise, and yeah, I mean, it's incredible. It really, really is. So, that's about all you need to know. Other than that, just move through and put blizzards on everything, and watch it all die behind you while it can't do anything frozen and helpless. All that remains, then, is Paragon. Starting on the first board, because you have to. Get uh, yourself up uh, to Resilience, then ignore the rest and go through the Elementalist path, heading straight up to the node, grabbing specifically this Intelligence to activate your first cliff, Elementalist. This will amp up both Elemental Balance and Erudite, which you get, and uh, give a really healthy damage increase on top of the permanent 15% mini Tal Rashes. Then we progress up past uh, this magic node here into our first board, which is the Enchantment Master, 
to the core of every sorcerer build. Going right to begin with and straight to the glyph slot for reinforced. We always have a barrier so this DR is nice and the increased non-physical and all resist amped by erudite and elemental balance is also very very nice. Fill out here grabbing the extra non-physical damage and then we go to elementalist and then the extra little non-physical damage here. There was some leftover points so this is a good use for them. Then we do the same over on the top and get ruinous along with two extra non-physical damage nodes. Now once we've got it all set up like that we can head right in to burning instinct our fire synergy. This is very key too as I'm sure you know. Going straight down here just to get cinders but no more. Then to the glyph slot where we will have destruction for that sweet critical damage. Activate it and amping with as much dexterity as we can get from around the area. Also making sure to go down get smoldering embers and the extra dexterity too. We can also take a slight little detour just to grab kindling as it's a nice increase and not too heavy on the point investment and then we can move on to the next board which is straight down and this is your icefall board. We want to initially go down and to the right make sure it's arranged like this and then head straight for that legendary node. We don't need to worry about going further yet until we filled out the rest of the board but getting the legendary node ASAP is the most important thing. It's a big damage increase. Sparing two points just to grab the DR is very nice and worthwhile and then we can head straight down here, branching right for Polar Rhyme, big damage increase, straight down, then further to the Glyph Slot, which will then be Control. Of course, we're chilling and freezing everything, so this is a huge increase. Make sure it's all nicely activated with specifically the dexterity in this little cluster here, and then finally this one on the other side of Frigid, which we want anyway for the needed DR. Then we can go straight across and just finish up with Frost for the more damage to chilled enemies. Now we can continue on from Icefall, heading straight down to this rare node in Cryomancy for more cold damage, but the chill application is also nice too. Then we want to move on into our next board, up and right. This is going to be Frigid Fate. Have it arranged so the depressive is in your bottom left corner, and then we go straight across, detour down through the intelligence to get to Stalagmite, which is our 10% crit chance on your ice spikes, which is really, really good for this, and and then we want to continue on for chilling to get the 10 intelligence to activate it. If this was level 15, I could get the intelligence a little bit more efficiently, so rearrange if yours is level 15. But now we go up through weakness all the way round and grab Frigid Fate, which is almost maxed thanks to the extra cold damage we've been grabbing on the other board. This is really, really big and why we want as much vulnerable as possible, hence the Frozen Orb enchantment. Then we can go straight up in to our final board, which is going to be, for want of a better choice really, your Static Surge. We're stunning people a lot with Raymond and Teleport, so at least this does increase our damage, but mainly this board exists just to activate another Glyph for us. And that Glyph is Flame Feeder for the 10% multiplicative to Flaming Targets, which is every target. So get it, activate it with specifically this Dexterity, and we are done. So, six glyphs, all the rare nodes we could need. I am very pleased with this Paragon board. I think it is quite elegant and, of course, heartily recommend it. Which brings us to the end, then, of uh, this Ice Spikes Blizzard build, the Season 3 edition. I, uh, as I've been saying, I'm really impressed with its performance. It's honestly outdoing Firewall and Meteor, which I'm a little bit sad by, but I don't think Meteor's done. I just don't think the best form of Meteor and the new Unique needs Firewall and hopefully this is what I'll be bringing you next because if it works out it's going to be so cool. It really is. But for now the so cool thing is Blizzard and yeah it really really is potent. I hope you have a good time with it and until well our next build like you've enjoyed this subscribe and hit the bell for more consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below and until we meet again. Oh, God.
Bob. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.